So let me clarify that what I was trying to write here is that this will collect all solutions phi to the system such that the initial condition is in K. That's what this says in words. Anyhow, how do we check this? That's the question to try to answer. In general, it boils down to some properties of solutions, but we would like to try to write them down in a way that is somewhat doable with some techniques. So, um, the problem of checking if a CPA, CPA satisfies a formula is difficult to solve. We will provide some insight on how to solve it for certain formulas. Before that, since we're going to be interested in maximal solutions and whether they are complete or not, for reasons that will become clear in a few minutes, let me somewhat outline how you can check whether you have solutions to the system. Okay. So, solutions to a CPS given by a hybrid inclusion might not exist from certain points. or the maximum solutions might not be complete, meaning the domain not unbounded, says phi is not complete. We introduced that definition earlier. So to guarantee existence of solutions to a CPSH from points in the flow set or jump set, we can check the following. I will start on a different page where I'm trying to convey and it's just doing on a sketch so I got this so we have our sets where flows are allowed and where jumps are allowed and what we argue already is that we can have solutions that flow for some time and then reach a point where 
they cannot continue forward because the vector field, let's say here, is pushing in all, let's say it's even set value, but it's only pushing outside. Or we might have a solution that starts here, flows to the jump set, and then from there it jumps outside, and then you cannot continue. Those are most times ill-defined dynamics of the system. But if you were to come up with conditions that guarantee that this is not possible, what conditions come to mind? How, in particular, how would you rule out jumping out? And remember that the system is of the form x dot in f of x. This is our closed loop system, x in c without inputs so how can I guarantee that every time that there is a jump I don't have this type of behavior jumping out what would you impose Who defines where the solutions can jump? G, right? The map G. Where is that you can jump from? D, right? So you can jump from any point here. So this is the set of points D, the, the jump set is essentially saying where I can jump from and G on every point would be the set of points to where I jump from. So if I now compute G of X for every X in D or if I just make the union of all these sets. This is where this guy can take me. So maybe we can, for my, again, ill design example, maybe something like this. This is this set, which I'm going to call simply G on D. So what would I like to have for G on D? In order not to have this type of spills over. Something along those lines. Where do I want this set, this blue set to belong? Or or C. Remember the thermostat, right? <coughs> the thermostat, we have this simple planar plot where we'll decrease temperature, hit a point, and then jump to a point in C, way inside C. And then we will flow to the boundary of C and then keep doing this cycle. So you can imagine that G on D there is just points that are in the interior of C, inside C, way inside. You could go back to D, or from where you could jump again. So, somehow, we will have in mind a condition that says that G on D 
is contained in C union D. Very good. So this will prevent spillovers or jump out. This will prevent jumps outside C union D. Remember, C union D is basically my region of operation. Right? It's where I can flow, where I can jump. Okay, fair enough. If this guy takes me to D, I can continue jumping. But if he takes me to C, like for instance, from a point here, he takes me to C, then I might still do that. So this fix jumping out, but did not fix dying on a boundary. How do we fix that? What would you like to have? Something similar, right? But now it's more about the directions rather than jumping. So we would like that the flow map directions is taking a direction that is worst case tangent but ideally inward the set C C minus D C minus D so what would you say about C minus D? it's right on target because what we are trying to figure out now is that we have existence of solutions so because of this that I just wrote here, if I start in D, I jump. So I have a little bit of a solution, right? It's more, maybe not all I'm interested in, but at least I can jump. Now imagine that I'm in a point that is in C, but not in D. C, but not in D, namely, in C minus D. What I would like to have is that the differential inclusion x dot in f of x, x in C has a solution for some a small amount of time. So this is saying that whenever I'm not in C and D, like for instance here, I have a little bit of flow. Well, at least I have this much. But if I now keep checking this every point that is not in D, I will eventually pick a point that is here. And in that point, I will need to have a little bit of flow. Certainly in that direction I cannot have a little bit of flow, so that implies that necessarily I need to flow within C. Okay. So again, somehow hand wavy, but the technicalities involved on this will be more clear in the next quarter, in the hybrid course. These are the type of conditions that will allow me to say that there is some solution. And further conditions can be formulated to guarantee that maximal solutions are complete. You check some of these for the timer systems, for instance, you check that every maximal solution was complete already. And hopefully we'll get to that next course. So with that being said, now we can
can think about the following. So how is this going to help us? Well, now we have some background on how to check existence of solutions. And believe me, there are ways to check whether maximal die complete. So let me give you conditions for eventually. And for some reason, I did it on a atomic proposition. So let's just call it A1. OK? Eventually. So we will assume that A1 is an atomic proposition and without loss of generality there is a function of the state x of the CPS. Okay. So then I can write the following. A1 of x equal true is the set of points at which a1 is satisfied. Okay. Again, this is true. This is not time. Maybe I should just write true. So what is what is now a condition given a CPS that will guarantee this proposition? Again, I'm thinking about these propositions being functions of the state. Okay, maybe to be a little more precise, this is in Rn, any point in Rn, such that this proposition is true. So you can compute this set, right, if A1 is an explicit function, and figure out where this will be true or not true. And then you will build this set. Recall that eventually a one, so recall that a solution satisfies if do you remember? You did this, right? You just did this. You don't remember. If there exists T. T prime, J prime in the domain of phi, T prime, J prime.
that was at some t, right? So now it can be any t because it's for the whole solution, right? So this is there exists t prime j prime domain t such that phi t prime j prime satisfies a one. Will imply this will imply that we have one t prime j prime. So is this enough? So again, remember the quick structure. This will say that there is one t prime j prime such that this is true. If I want this to be at every tj, now if I pick another tj, there has to be another t prime j prime that this will be satisfied. And then keep doing this over and over, right? So there exists t prime j prime in the domain such that this is true, where T prime J prime is larger or equal than Tj and this holds so here we need to put for every Tj in the domain of phi. So for every Tj in the domain, so I pick my hybrid time, there exists some T prime J prime that is beyond or equal to the current, but that needs to hold for every TJ I, I pick. So it's a recurrency property. So what is one very simple way to satisfy it? We build a set K that is no more than what we had above, X in Rn, such that A1 of X is true. And assure that the set satisfies the following properties. The existence of a T prime J prime just one, okay? So I'm at tj equals zero. The existence of a t prime j prime in the future, let's say at time t prime equal 10, j equal 2, whatever, could be guaranteed by this set being attractive in a finite amount of time, okay? So the following property, the first is attractive 
in finite time and that will allow me to say that I reach it. So there is sister t prime j prime. Now I can take the simple route and be very stubborn and put in the condition that now once I reach it I stay. And if I reach it and I stay, it eventually will always hold. So what does it mean, reach it and stay? Stability is the star stay close. What is the property that says if I start, I stay? Invariance. Okay. So, but it's a very specific set, right? The set that I'm trying to converge to and the set that I want to render an invariant is the set that my proposition is satisfied. Okay. So we have techniques for attractivity in the limit using the Lyapunov functions. There are Lyapunov conditions that guarantee also convergence in a finite amount of time. Okay. We haven't seen those, but those are all there. And we have techniques for invariance. Let me further emphasize that attractivity in the limit will not help, right? Because we will never be in that set, unless we start in that set. But we want to do this for every solution. So for every solution. Okay. So let me just write this. Um, attractivity in finite time is basically saying for every initial condition, there exists a t bar, j bar, in the domain of phi, such that the limit as t plus j goes to that t bar j bar of the solution, distance to k is equal to zero. Okay, so now is not that t plus j go to infinity, but t plus j goes to a finite value that you have that. The other way that you can guarantee this is by writing what is called recurrence of a set. And we will not have time for that, but you realize that that's what eventually is actually telling us. Okay. So there are a couple more. If I have time on Tuesday, I'll present them. There is one for always and a slight different variation of eventually. But these are the type of conditions that one can hope to satisfy by using what we currently have. And the catch is that, in particular, this one, you need to have finite time properties. Because at the end of the day, the eventually and some of the temporal formulas that you might want to construct require properties to be occurring in finite time. The limit doesn't 